Hello to all my beautiful people. Sweet Sadie J coming back at you. Hope everybody's having a wonderful Thursday. We're almost to the weekend, y'all. Woo woo! Anyway, just want, oh, I hate saying that anyway. But, um, just wanted to come on, just to let you guys know that everything's everything. You know, nothing has really changed. A quick little update on that so far on the, the vinegar cocktail that I was taking last week I'm really really glad that I stopped taking it because I have um, been dealing with some residuals like um, vertigo and nausea and I've had, I've had absolutely no leg cramps this week so far with just drinking plain water and sticking to my my intermittent fasting. Every time I get on this tape, my phone goes off like that. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I was just wanting to come on real quick and see if everybody was doing okay and just give you a little quick update. Um, I'll talk to you guys later on. Bye, y'all. Happy Thursday. Mm -hmm. Oh, I knew there was something else I wanted to tell you guys. If you guys have been noticing, I've been wearing like these tight, um, I guess you call it camisoles or t-shirts or whatever. Anyway, whatever they're called. I've been starting to wear them since I started um, the fasting and trying to lose weight. Only to hold myself accountable because normally I wear loose fitting, hanging clothes that won't let me deal with the reality of my apple shape you know so by wearing these they're tighter and they're constrictor and they remind me throughout the day that i am not as cute as i think i am so i have to stay working hard on this diet to get where i want it good when um but i've been wanting to tell y'all that for a while and i keep forgetting but these really really do hold you accountable because even though they're a stretchy material they fit you you know close fitting so, well, y'all all know, but that's what I wanted to tell you. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Hello, my beautiful people. Hope everybody's having a great Saturday. I'm just coming on to share with you guys how I take out my uh, twist out after I just re-moisturized again. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, this time I did it in single two-strand twist, which... I don't like doing it takes me so much longer and um, I don't think it comes out as nice uh, I like flat twisting my hair but I'll be back after I take all these twists out talk to you guys in a few bye okay guys y'all see how this looks Ugh. I definitely do not like the single two strand twist um, I really really prefer to put my hair in flat twist and as you can see this is my week to put my rinse in my hair yay all right be back in a minute okay y'all uh, this is me trying to separate these twists because this time it came out really tight and uh, in the top it's still damp so I'm not sure how this is gonna come out but we're gonna take a whack at it. See y'all in a minute. Okay, so this is how it's looking right now. I haven't lifted it from the roots yet. Um, I wanna put a little makeup on first and then see if I can give my curls some time to relax. Cause right now they're really tightly twisted and so it doesn't look as good as it did the last time it was nice and fluffy and it was completely dry and right up here in the top it's wet it's not damp it's wet it's still wet so you see this curl right here it, it is completely damp so um, 
I'm going to pen it up right now and come back and try to put a little makeup on. And then we'll see what we can do. The world of natural hair. <laughs> okay. Uh, just got the hair out of the way. Of course, you can see my roots. It's all right. We'll be okay. Um, I just wanted to, while I was trying to put some makeup on, just do a little... Um, just a little chit chat about depression and mental illness and how truly 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 real it is today and how many people are suffering from it especially African American women and of all ages okay of all ages um you know like I said I'm up in the age I've just you know told you guys how old I am but my issues with mental illness started um, around 15 so um, there are a lot a lot of women excuse me dealing with this uh, depression mental illness we as African American women we basically are carrying the world on our shoulders. We are the most least valued um, um, least valued, mistreated um, I would say on on the earth because um, you know how the rest of the world already feels towards you know African American as a whole and then um, black women you know how we've been made to feel you know most of our lives that we're loud we're ugly we're big we're black we're this you know and we're that and Whew. Then, uh, you know, having no man in, the, in most of our households, raising our children alone and working and going to school and just, you know, doing everything on our own and by ourselves and having the system bash us either way if we work and try to take care of our kids on our own, you know. We're out working, we're bad parents because we're working all the time. If we sit on welfare and get aid, you know, we're bad people. We carry the weight of the world on our shoulders. And then on top of all that, our men don't love us, you know, and they don't value our beauty. And I'm not saying all, I'm just saying, you know, the basic <laughs> So, um, and then on top of that, you know, we have to deal with, um, our own families, you know, like our sons and our brothers and our uncles who cross over into other races. Like, I only have one child and that's a son. And my son would rather be dead than to date a black woman, especially a black woman like his mother, you know, <laughs> but, um, my brother's all married outside of their race, and I don't have anything wrong with that, excuse me, y'all, it's my timer for my sugar, I have no problem with it, I would be totally, totally insulted if somebody tried to tell me who I could love and who I couldn't love, and I personally have dated outside of my race, so... My point is, is that, um, getting back to the, why African American women suffer so much from, you know, mental illness and depression, and, and I'm not saying it's just us women, because the men got their loads too, you know, but this is a conversation today about African American women, and particularly myself and how we carry the weight of the world on our shoulders and 
without even realizing at some points in our lives how overwhelmed we we were and are to this day you know of course when I'm you know trying to um, film a, a video but yeah um, so I just really wanted to address my issues because um, basically I've done without a man more than I've had a man okay so that doesn't bother me you know if I can't be happy with you I'd rather be happy without you my issues are um, just trying to like myself Sorry, y'all. It's not so much of um, what others say about me as much as it is about what I say and how I feel about myself. Now, there is a connection to that because even though I say that, I know that the way I feel about myself is based on, you know, what others have said about me throughout my life, you know? And when you think about it, I'm very strong and very animate of being, you know, defensive on the outside, but on the inside, it's all about how you feel about yourself what you see in that mirror when you look in the mirror and you see yourself you know what do you see do you see what those people say about you or do you see what God says about you now as much as I love God and want to immerse myself in his word and do his will at all times it is sometimes very very difficult you know but um, over the years, I've learned that it was only difficult because I was trying to do it my way and not his way. And um, I think it's just important to value ourselves before we expect someone else to value us. And just because one person says something negative and 99 other people have said something positive, what do we tend to think on that one percent that said something negative i don't know why we do it but we do it and we all know we do it so but the point is how we have to dig down deep and find the strength to not allow people to have that kind of power over us because it is and can be and has been extremely devastating you know if you let it sink down in your soul you know if you look in the mirror and you see you know <laughs> what they say now all of a sudden your whole perception of yourself is different like I didn't know I was dark skin until somebody said you're dark skin I didn't know I wasn't considered pretty until somebody told me you know what I'm saying I mean um, now as I was growing up, I was told the opposite. That pretty big eyed, you know, girl, till I got in school and the boys would, you know, tease me about my big eyes and my big lips. But then as I grew up as an adult or a teenager, those very same boys were trying to date me because of those big eyes and those big lips, you know? <laughs> so it's funny how you can go full circle in your life, you know, and you could have wasted all that time feeling so bad about yourself, you know, all based off of what one person, just one person said. And, you know, we got, on top of all that, we have the audacity to treat each other, you know, worse than we treat anybody else. Black women, are so rude to each other. They're so unkind to each other. When did that happen? When did when when did it become such a competition out here that you know we had to be unkind to each other the way we are today? You know, 
I mean, we've got every force of race in this world against us, and we have the audacity or the stupidity enough to be ripping at each other's throats on top of all that. You know, what happened to our sisterhood? Did the white man win? Did he really break us all up apart? He took our men, he killed the ones that he don't kill, he puts in prison, you know, or he debilitates to the point where they can't do anything else but sell drugs and become alcoholics or whatever. Now he's, is it him or is it just our stupidity that allows society to tell us how we're supposed to feel towards each other, you know? I mean, I'm at a loss for words here because I just don't understand, you know, how we could, you know, just fall into the traps of what society says about us, you know, and then rip each other's throats out on top of it because, excuse me, um, when we should be banding together more and becoming stronger together, it seems like we're falling further and further apart. The jealousy, the envy, and the strife is so strong and so overwhelming, and we can't even hide it even when we want to. And I'm including myself in that, honey, because believe me, I've had my opinions and my feelings, and you know, the way I've looked at other black people in my job has almost cost me my other job, just being judgmental because, you know, the way they came in and they were loud and they were this and they were that. And I'm sitting here going, well, how can I get mad at my son or my brothers or any other black man that chooses to marry outside of his race, you know, when I myself think and feel like that, you know, but it took some, it took some time, but I got out of it because like I said, First, it almost cost me my job because I was having complaints filed against me. <laughs> That's not funny, but it is funny. But yeah, um, but yeah, it's just like you wonder and you wonder why. Why is all this going on? Who's responsible? Is it them or is it us? I mean, how much of this are we responsible for? And if you read your scriptures and you read the Bible, it's so it's so clear about that blame game, playing that blame, blame, blame game, you know, we never want to take responsibility for the parts that we play, you know, we always want to blame everybody else, but there's a time and a place where we really, really need to just buckle down and say, okay, you know what, nobody's putting a gun to my head, nobody's making me think like this, I am choosing. I am choosing to be a butthead, to think like a butthead, you know? <laughs> I am choosing to to look at somebody and just judge them, you know, on the outside without knowing anything about them on the inside, you know? And that's where we have to come to grips and understand these things have so much to do with mental illness because trying to get through life to get today, you know, just feeling so bad about yourself because of what other people feel towards you or how other people acted towards you has a lot to do, you know, with the mental illness. Now, for me, my mental illness came from me, uh, my life not going down the path that I wanted it to go down, you know, um, things not turning out. I so had dreams and hopes and dreams and, and it seemed like I was not able to accomplish any of them. And I'm not making any excuses. I didn't dig my, my feet in that sand like I was supposed to and fight for what I thought I wanted, you know. And I didn't, I guess I didn't want to go through, um, what do you say, the struggle. I just wanted my dreams and I didn't want to struggle for it. But it, I tried. I thought I tried. But um, in the end, I wasn't very successful. And the, my biggest nightmare came true. And that was 
where I started off in life was where I finished off in life. And it was sad because at one time, it was a lucrative job. It was a great job. It paid very well. The benefits were excellent. I made more money at, you know, working in the supermarket at that time than most people made at, um, college graduates made working at IBM, you know. So, at that time, it was okay, but for some reason, God constantly told me that I needed to finish school, you know, go back to school, finish, and graduate so so I could have something else under my belt because I wasn't going to want to do something this physical for the rest of my life, you know. And so he told me that even before I injured my back. And then after, my, after I injured my back, he just kind of like reiterated you know just supported what he was already trying to tell me and it's one thing that's really really important in life I think is for us to listen to that that inner voice that instinctual feeling thought you know when it stops you in your tracks and says maybe I should do this as opposed to that I really really think that we should listen to it because Every time I can think of any time in my life that my instinct has ever told me to do something, you know, and I didn't do it, how much I suffered for it, you know, and the consequences are, are real. They are truly, truly real. Those consequences of disobeying God and not listening to Him and thinking that what we want is more important than what he's telling us to to want you know is so real so if you ever have the opportunity and your instinct is telling you to do something and it's hard know that everything that's hard is it's going to be worthwhile because anything that's easy everybody has and everybody can do but needless to say I don't really know where my mental illness stemmed from. Um, I was never, I never considered myself, you know, unattractive. I've always had my share of, you know, friends and lovers and whatnot. So I've been engaged to be married to, uh, twice and, you know, I didn't marry anybody. I didn't get married, but I was engaged. So I never felt... Like, I was, you know, ugly, <laughs> you know? So, that I don't think that, that that has anything to do with my depression. I just feel like me not being able to be successful the way I pictured successful in my life was what drove me, you know, to constantly think about, you know, wanting to end my life and then to be the age that I'm at now and to be going through this crazy crap of living on my younger sister, you know, and being, you know, totally in somebody else's care or, you know, just, it's a horrible feeling, you know, it's a horrible, horrible feeling and, um, this is the point where now, okay, I'm, I finally decided to dig my feet deep in the sand and just do, do it the way God says to do it or the way I think God is saying to do it. But at the same time, I have doubts and I think about other things like, am I, is that a cop out? Am I just being lazy? You know, there's just so many intervals that can make you cuckoo for Cocoa Pops, you know? You read your Bible every day, you immerse yourself in the Word of God, you trust and believe and, you know, you just love the Lord and you want to live the way He tells you to live, but then the reality of your life actually flashes in front of your face and you're like, um, <laughs> you know, um, yeah, because that's pretty much where I'm at. I'm always at. I'm always there. Um, you know, really? Um, how long am I supposed to do this? Um, how long am I supposed to hold on? Um, you know, and you just constantly, constantly questioning yourself and your behavior and your actions and, and I'm waking up, um, uh, 
I was only on Lexapro for my depression, which is the, like the least um, aid to help people in their depressions. It, that's the least stuff that you could be on, okay? And that's what I was on, Lexapro. And then I just ran out of my refills re recently, and I have an appointment coming up this Monday with my therapist to um, to talk to her, and I'll probably get re you know, re-prescript up, but I was trying to get off, and this is like the second or third time I actually tried to wean myself off, and Lexapro doesn't need to be weaned off, it's not like all the rest of the, you know, the harsher stuff where you, you do have to wean yourself off, you cannot just stop taking that stuff, you have to be weaned off, well Lexapro is not like that, so, but, what I'm trying to say is that since I've run out of my prescription, I have been um, how do you say, I have been dealing with the depression more. I mean, I've been waking up out of my sleep at 2 o'clock in the morning thinking about, you know, past hurts that, you know, caused me to want to start breaking down again, you know. And I, I hate, I literally hate to think about the past because... The past is the past, and that's just where it should stay. There's absolutely, absolutely nothing we can do about the past. It's done. It's over with. If you went to God, ask for forgiveness, he's wiped your slate clean. Now, we need to wipe our slate clean. But Satan, as he would have it, will not let you forget your past. And he will constantly, every now and then, without you even seeing it, throw you a sucker punch and make you relive those, you know, those th those issues. And it could just, uh, I want to say, like I said, a sucker punch. It can knock the wind out of you, you know. It can really knock the wind out of you. And I'm sitting here and I'm wondering... Is it because I haven't been taking the Lexapro, or is it just in my mind that I need the Lexapro, you know, so that I won't get depressed, and, I mean, I don't know. I really have no answers to anything, because like I have said over and over again, life is trial and error. How do you know what you're supposed to be doing, you know? Do you really need, do I really need to be on the Lexapro? Does it really do that much for me? Or am I just thinking because I'm taking it, it's helping me and so I'm faring better. But I'm honestly, honestly seeing my depression um, It's not, it's not, it's not, um, I'm not making it up. I'm honestly seeing my depression heighten since I stopped taking it, you know? <clears throat> Excuse me. And so I'm trying to see, okay, when do you, when do you ever get better? When do you ever stop, you know, needing to be on, you know, on medication to help you out. When does the madness ever end, you know? Um, I can go from zero to 100 in a millisecond and not know why. What the hell is that, you know? What, I mean, really? Is that really necessary? I can walk in the bathroom and turn around quickly and go to walk back out of the bathroom and all of a sudden have a breakdown, an episode, you know. And my depression is the kind where you mostly want to hurt yourself. It's an overwhelming feeling of sadness. And, um, even if things are going, you know, okay in your life at that moment, you still feel an overwhelming of, an overwhelmingness of sadness, and you don't know where it's coming from. And like I said, most of the time, I want to hurt myself, you know, 
some people can piss me off, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and I try not to plant that seed that plants the seed that plants the seed, <laughs> you know, <laughs> because some people can make you want to rip their faces off and tack them to their behinds, you know, and okay, like I said, I don't really want to plant the seed to plant the seeds that plants the seed, <laughs> you know, so I try to, you know, keep that mess at bay, but yeah, uh, it can happen, but for the most part, my depression definitely um, makes me want to hurt myself, and um, I don't want to hurt myself, I really don't, I want to live, I just don't want to live under all this, you know, ugliness, darkness, and you know, my dreams are basic. I want to help others. I want to, you know, go to the nursing homes where the lonely senior citizens are just sitting there dry rotting with no one to talk to. I want to, you know, go to the animal place and, and deal and help take care of the unwanted animals because I love, love, love animals. I love dogs. You know, I have dreams and fantasies of sitting on my front porch and drinking iced tea and lemonade. I don't really want to be, you know, I don't know. It's just seems my, my, my wants are so small in comparison to what so many other people want, you know. I do, I would like to travel. I would at least like to go on a real vacation at least twice a year. I would like to take my mother with me once and then I like to go on one by myself. These are my hopes and my dreams of my life, you know. And I'm sitting here going, what did I do wrong? Where did I go wrong? And I mean, God says for us to accept exceedingly and abundantly all that we could ever dream of, you know, but to me, those things are exceedingly and abundantly all that I could ever dream of. But at the same time, they seem so simple, you know, they don't, they don't seem to be like, far-fetched you know <laughs> like I'm asking for too much and I'm just sitting here going I'm so far away from those things right now you know and I worked so hard for so long and I'm just like excuse me I've gone completely backwards and I know that they they the Bible says sometimes you have to be taken all the way down to be brought further up or higher up, you know, I understand all that, and, and you know, I love and trust my, the word of God, but <clears throat> for some reason, I just can't seem to stop asking, what did I do wrong? Even though I know, you know, I lived, I was no perfect saint, you know, I did my due like everybody else, but, you know, for the most part, I didn't even enjoy most of the stuff because I was so condemned all the time and so conflicted. Even if I was doing wrong, I really didn't en even enjoy it because I was conflicted. You know, I was conflicted. I was ashamed. And so, um, not that that matters, obviously, <laughs> you know, because uh, you're still going to have to deal with the consequences because the Word of God says those that know the Word and do it not are more condemned to, you know, the wrath of God than the ones who don't know the word and do it not. So, um, I'm just rattling right now, guys. I just wanted you guys to understand what happens here with me sometimes. And I never thought I would get to this point where I would be able to talk about it to this point. Because when I go to therapy and I try to talk about this stuff, I fall apart, you know? And so, I am happy because I started this as part of my therapy and I want to help anybody that I possibly can. And I know that there's a lot of, lot of young people women out here that are dealing with a lot of these issues you know and would love to be able to talk about it and I want you to know that if you 
go to therapy. It's the best thing you'll do for your life. I know so many women who are dealing with so many issues, divorce, you know, single motherhood, just worrying about the finances, just all these things that we deal with every day of our lives, you know, every day of our lives. And having someone to just non-judgmentally sit down and listen to you for a half an hour to an hour, whatever your um, therapy does, and you being able to get that stuff off your chest is one of the most Hmm. It really works, guys. It really, really helps. You know, it's not going to solve any of your problems. Your problems are still going to be there when you get when you get back to them. But the bottom line is, you will be able to help. I mean, help yourself deal with it more. Understanding first and foremost that it's normal. That it's normal first of all, and that there's nothing to be ashamed of. Second of all. And that everybody needs help and you're stronger when you reach out and accept that help than when you you know sit around and just try to deal with it all by yourself you know so I don't know um, I want to talk more about the depression and the mental health I'm still a little weak on it. But I do really, 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 really want to talk more about it because the more you talk about it, the more you help yourself and the more you help others. And because it used to be something that I guess was frowned upon in the black community, the African American community, and that us black women, we're just supposed to be so strong all the time, and we have been, and we still are right now today. We're still carrying the weight of the world on our shoulders, but it is okay to feel overwhelmed. It is okay to feel overburdened. It is okay to feel unloved and the way the world has treated us and behaved towards us and the way we treat each other. It's understandable. But get help. Talk about it. Talk it out. If you can't talk to your family, if you can't talk to somebody in your church, then get professional help because mental illness is real. But I've been on here for a long time now and um, I just wanted to come on and do my hair and makeup while I was talking to you, talking to you guys. And I'm probably going to name this tape, uh, Talking GRFC, Get Ready With Me For Church. <laughs> but um, I'm going to be trying to attempt to talk more about it because I do have a lot to say and I have a lot to talk about. But at the same time, I thank my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for bringing me, <laughs> you know, <clears throat> see, I, that's what I'm saying, you know, I still get, you know, emotional about it. But... I am so grateful. And if I could just help one person, then my mission here on earth will be will be done because we need to help each other. We need to lift each other up and be kind to each other. and encourage each other more and support each other more because at the end of the day I don't care what anyone else says we are all each other has anymore we're it we're it so just food for thought but 
sorry about the emotional breakdown, but this is this is the real this is the real deal. Transparency and all. But uh I am still uh this didn't come out the way I I want it. I might just, you know, spritz it with a little bit of water tonight and just flat twist it up like I did it the last time because I absolutely love the way my hair came out the last time. This is kind of frizzy, which is okay with me. I don't mind frizz, you know. Frizz is our natural hair and so I'm okay with it. It would only last, you know, like a day or two or normally I would be retwisting it back up tonight, you know, but if I do anything, I will be flat twisting it back up, but um, I have been uh, re-moisturizing my hair like every two days I'm just totally totally listening to my hair and I'm you know like on my last um, post I showed y'all how thirsty my hair was you know and it gets like that like every two days you know so maybe even every day but uh, I want to do it every day but I will at least do it every two days re-moisturize and rehydrate you know and stick to my flat twist, you know, because I really like that. Um, <clears throat> it is this coming week time for me to wash my hair. That'll be two weeks. I might even let it stretch for another week. I don't know. I need to put a rinse in my hair. So, you know, uh, so I'll probably go ahead and wash it this week. You know, this week coming up, I'm still working on trying to do my makeup. It's a lot easier for me to do it when I'm not doing it on, you know, while I'm, you know, trying to tape. But, you know, I'm still learning. And learning. you see my hands are all swatched because I make sure now that I swatch my makeup before I just plop it up there on my face. That was definitely a, a good learning lesson. But um, <coughs> I wanted to tell you guys about the vinegar and water I stopped it completely I will not be returning to it um, it has made me sick uh, I've been dealing with vertigo and nausea for the entire week and I haven't taken it at all this week but I'm still um, been dealing with the vertigo and the nausea and um, I don't know where that's coming from so I'm hoping it'll stop by by you know the following week um, but yeah, after I eat, I have to keep a piece of gum by me at all times now because as soon as I eat, right after I eat, I feel nauseous, you know. And the vertigo is not to the point where I'm stumbling or almost falling or anything. It's just making my head feel really heavy. The inside of my head feel really heavy. And I don't like that at all. So vinegar is definitely out. Um, I ha don't weigh myself until Monday. So you guys all know on Wednesday because I've changed my uploading days from Tuesday to Wednesdays because I feel like when I upload on Sundays, it's not giving me any time in between to rest or even get any real material that I want to talk about because it's like only one day. So uh, I will be uploading from now on on Wednesdays and Sundays if when I can, okay? So I'm trying to be consistent. And I want to make sure they're coming out on the same days, but it gives me a little bit more time from Sunday. It gives me Monday and Tuesday, and then I can, you know, upload on Wednesday and then again on Sunday. So, um, that's the only real change. I did walk yesterday. Woohoo! What? <laughs> I know, I wasn't even planning on it, but the weather has been so gorgeous and so beautiful that... I just stuck my head out the front door and I was like, oh, I got to walk. Now, the day before, I should have done it too, but I was lazy. But um, I had my phone on me. And for some reason, it did not log my, my walk. And I was very upset about it because I walked for a good 45 minutes. But I made sure that I just walked. I basically just put one foot in front of the other and just walk. I didn't try to overexert myself. I didn't try to speed walk. I just walk. And I still worked up a sweat. I still worked up my heart rate, you know, coming up. So I was real eager to see, you know, how long I had walked and how far and how many calories I had burned. But like I said, my phone didn't didn't log it yesterday. I don't know why. So I'm going to try it again. I, it's beautiful out today. It's late now. I'm not going to go this late, even though it doesn't get dark until 7 now. But um, 
maybe tomorrow I might go out. I don't know. Everything's so sporadic in my life. It's just when I feel like it, I just can't let go of the fact of not doing something physical. It's just so embedded in me that I don't feel right if I'm not doing something. And anybody can take a walk, you know? And because it clears out the cobwebs in your head and, you know, you're into your music and you just like, ah, it feels so good, you know? So it's just something I really want to do. And I'm not trying to kill myself and overexert myself. My hip has not hurt all day today from walking yesterday. So I know I did it the right way, you know, just one foot in front of the other and just walk. So I just wanted to share that with you guys and let you know, but I will be coming back and letting you know on Wednesday of my, um, of my weight loss journey. I don't feel anything. Normally I can feel a difference in my clothes. Um, I can feel a difference in my body when I'm losing weight. Now last week when I lost the six and a half pounds, in the beginning of the week I felt like I was losing weight. But then towards the end of the week, closer to my weighing day, I started feeling heavy, bloated, and I was like, oh, uh, I don't think I lost any weight. And then Monday when I got up on the scale and I had dropped six and a half pounds, I was stunned. So keep your fingers crossed. Let's see, you know, what's it going to say this Monday. I almost messed myself up yesterday and got on the scale, but I had so much stuff piled on top of my chair over my scale that that stopped me. And I was just like, okay, thank you, God, because I know I need to just wait until Monday and just keep it once a week, you know. But as I said, I don't feel anything, you know. I don't feel any difference in my clothes. So we'll see, you know. I hope it works because I've been sticking to my intermittent fasting. I've been sticking to my drinking my water, you know. And I even would like to incorporate my walking if nothing more than three days a week, you know, 45 minutes a day. I want to just... Make it simple and keep it simple, you know, and not overexert myself. So uh, keep your fingers crossed for me, guys, and I'll let you know on uh, my next upload of the progress. But other than that, y'all, be kind. Kind. <laughs> Being kind is the new pretty. Remember that. Love each other and help build each other up, not tear each other down. I love you guys. I thank you so much for interacting with me with your, through your comments. You know, um, I'm ecstatic. <laughs> I've got 75 subscribers. Whoa. I'm ecstatic. I'm just like, what? <laughs> you know, me? But, you know, I know what God wants is what God wants. And, you know, he'll do it if he wants, if that's what he wants. Y'all see that jean jacket hanging behind me on my um, uh, vintage curio cabinet? That is another way that I'm keeping myself um, alert about my dieting. It is one of my favorite jean jackets, and it I can get it on, but I can't close it. And so I hang it there to as an inspiration as to what I'm working towards. You know, this is the reason why I'm working so hard because I want to be able to fit that jean jacket. And it's already spring, so well, almost spring, you know. And that's the time of the year where we wear our jean jackets that and in the fall before it gets too cold. And I want to wear my jean jacket. <laughs> so I brought it out of my closet and I hung it up there so that I could see it every day. So that's another part of keeping myself held accountable and inspired to, to do what I'm trying to do. So you guys take care. I love you all. Have a wonderful weekend. And thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you. Bye-bye.